Hey there. All right. Right before us, we have the Asus X205TA-US01-BL Signature Edition that I picked up from the Canadian um, Microsoft online store for $199, which is uh, roughly about $158 US. I think on the, the, uh, the US store, if you guys are watching this from, from there... Um, this new model is, is kind of short, new SKU, I should say. It is, it, this model's been around for uh, a number of months. Um, it is showing up as 199 but down in the U.S., uh, at least I can see watching the market trends, these uh, devices, the X205 TAs, tend to go on sale for about $150 U.S. to even $99. I've seen it at Staples. So... Uh, you do get some some great pricing, and it is comparable to tablet pricing. So that's kind of like uh, where the market segment is that that I'm going to be focusing in on. Um, and to that note, too, the internals of this of this laptop, this mini laptop, um, are what you're going to find in in a, uh, a lot of the tablets out there. It's a Z3735F processor, Bay Trail Atom processor. And uh, it's clocked in at 1.33 gigahertz, which will turbo boost up to 1.83 gigahertz. And what I can tell you is watching this um, clock speed differentiation uh, running games, it seems to hover mostly around uh, 1.5 gigahertz. So that's probably about its operating speed when, when playing games. Um, it, of course, uses Intel HD graphics, and uh, that is the same as the tablets out there as well. But uh, we will be putting that uh, configuration to some tests very, very soon. Talking about the features of the laptop itself outside of the in internal configuration, um, the case, what I'll say is that it is a very nice feel. It's a very premium case. It's almost a soft feel to it. Um, but because it is is this sort of material, it's also a dark blue. I don't know if that shows up. It's it's dark blue, almost a black kind of thing. Um, but it is a fingerprint magnet because it is a soft touch. And if you look out on the internet, a lot of people are com were have complained about the fact that it does um, really attract fingerprints. And I try not to have oil on my fingers when I'm touching it, but you know what does happen. So um, there's a variety of ways to to clean that. And uh, yeah, so. One bad design choice I will say about this case, and Lon Seidman on his channel had mentioned it, um, you can see these tiny little nubs here. They're not plastic. They're very thin, but they're metal. So what happens is on a, on a softwood desk or table like this one, it digs in. So And, I, and that's the reason why I have it on this piece of paper. Um, if I move it, I don't know if you can see this, you can see some of these scratches. That was actually put there by this machine as I was kind of moving it around um, without the paper underneath it. So that is something to be very, very aware of because uh, some of these, these desks and tables and whatnot are, are expensive. Um, very poor design choice by Asus. Uh, also, if I'm going to be critical of it, another poor design choice is a non-standard proprietary power plug here. And Asus does not sell... Um, a replacement power supply. I guess if it if it breaks, if you lose it, they'll probably help you out. But there isn't one on their store to, to buy as a backup. Um, although the case is nice, it feels great. Uh, the screen is a, a, a nice size, 11.6 inches, and it's it's bright, it's responsive, it's very crisp. Um, it does have viewing angles that do wash out, though. I mean, it is an LCD screen. Uh, don't expect a lot from that, but still, when viewed. Head on, it's quite nice. Um, again, being being critical of it, and by all means, I don't mean to be overly critical because I, I I am really liking this thing. Um, but it really should have a full size HDMI port rather than this micro HDMI port. Um, considering it has two full size USB two ports on this side, we can see them, um, which which is great, but. I really don't know why they went with a micro HDMI. It just kind of, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, now this is the micro SD card. You'll notice it does stick out a little bit from the laptop. Um, it does seem to require some force to stick it out, so it's not going to fly out like a piece of toast if you're, you're working on it. The keyboard has a very good feel. The travel, the size of it, um, despite being an 11.6 inch machine, 
it does uh, feel quite good. I thought it might be uh, feel a little cramped. It doesn't. It has good travel. Uh, I am impressed with the keyboard because I thought it would feel and be a lot cheaper than it was. The mouse pad itself is, is nice, it's responsive. It does have the gesture functions. And what I have said, uh, some people on, the, on the, the web have complained about the gesture stuff. And I don't know if this is an improvement from Asus or not, um, but I haven't noticed it die on me. But it does have a peculiar um, situation when you do put it in sleep mode, it can, on, on times, take a while for that service to restart. So um, there can be a period of time when the, the gestures aren't, aren't working. Another unusual thing about it is when you do power it down, or you do a, a start shutdown, it seems to be powered on for a short period of time as it goes through a shutdown procedure, um, an unusually long shutdown procedure of about 45 seconds to a minute. And during that time, you can't wake it up again with the power supply. You have to wait till it shuts down. You'll know when it shuts down, because this little green power light here, if you can see it, will go off. But it will remain on after the screen goes black and you've told it to shut down. And it looks like it's actually shut down, but it, it, it's not. So uh, anyways, those are my critiques on it. Um, outside of that, I'm, uh, I'm very happy with it. It, uh, it seems to be quite a, a nice little device. So anyways, uh, I'll end this now. That's the, the brief overview. Ask me any questions about it if you want. Um, I might put some additional information on the screen. I don't want to take up a lot of your time watching this uh, before we start to do some performance testing on it. So anyways, that's it. The Asus X205TA US01BL Signature Edition um, for $158 US, $199 uh, Canadian. And uh, yeah, so uh, with that, I'll end it and we'll move on. Thanks. Hello there. All right. We've got the uh, browser open here. This is Internet Explorer with four separate tabs with the uh, 1080p video. And just to show you, I've got 1080p selected on each of these guys. And we'll kick them all off and see how the Asus X205TA does with um, four separate uh, browser Tabs running 1080p video. Now, um, all right, so all these are playing. You can see that there is no slowdown. Um, it plays smoothly, no juddering, no slowdown. It, it, it does a great job. So um, we'll give it passing marks on that, and we'll go on to something. Okay, this is testing the internal SSD, uh, EMMC SSD. And this is using HD Tune. And uh, the brand is Hynix, which is something I've never heard of before, but... You can see we're getting pretty consistent transfer rates. Um, the maximum is shown up as 96.6, .6 and the minimum is 79.9. So um, it's pretty well straight uh, across. So you know, at least you can you can look at some uh, decent, consistent times there. I would have liked to see it over 100, but in this price segment, you know, I guess there are a variety of uh, manufacturers uh, kind of come into play. The um, Hip Street W8 Pro that I had done before, just for comparison purposes, had a Samsung in it. And uh, although you don't have it here, 
uh, I don't have it here. It was very up and down. There wasn't consistent uh, um, and some pretty deep dips too. So at least this is this is uh, fairly consistent at this speed. All right, on to the next one. Okay, here we are finishing up a test on the micro SD card, which is the Samsung SDXC UH. S1 card and it says it's capable of 48 meg a second um, but have a look at this terrible transfer speed we're looking at 10.6 uh, meg a second was the maximum 10.3 was the average and the minimum was 9.7 so um, we're pretty consistent there we're around 10 megabytes a second so this will require some research but uh, just on the note about the ST card I am installing all the games to that so um, I want to see the, the, the again the lowest common denominator when it comes to access speed and, and playing these things. So um, that's where our games are going to sit, and that's what we're going to be benchmarking against. So this will require again some research. I'll see if I can bump this up. Uh, I read online that people were were uh, getting about 20 megs a second, which is um, double what what this is. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's. Uh, that's what you get out of the box, and uh, I'll do some research and see if we can improve that. All right, I've tested the browser um, speed using Peacekeeper, which is uh, part of the FutureMark suite, and this is just a, an online um, test. So Chrome gave us our big result of 977. This is an HTML5 capabilities test, and you can see the other ones, it's, it's uh, located here for me. Internet Explorer 11 came out as 620, and Firefox 13, version 13, is 523. So um, Chrome is the big winner. All right, now is the part of the show when we're going to do some benchmarks. So this is Tomb Raider, and uh, it's the 800 by 600 setting. The nice thing about uh, the Tomb Raider engine is it seems to auto-detect your uh, screen ratio. So even though I've picked a 4 by 3 screen ratio it uh, comes up um, looking properly and Laura is not all stretched out so again this is a low preset um, everything I've selected is uh, as low or any of the advanced things like SSAO and post-processing effects uh, additional ones I've, I've turned off uh, the textures I've put to normal because there doesn't seem to make any difference between uh, normal textures and low textures and it just looks so much better with the, the proper textures on it. So. Doom Raider. So there you go. Minimum was 1.5. V-Sync is off by the way so that's only a fraction of a, um, a frame buffer so that's why it uh, ends up looking so low. But uh, maximum was 21.4 and our average frames per second was 17.1 not bad all right the last benchmark we are gonna do here is uh, Bioshock Infinite and this is just the benchmarking portion of it um, so the quality we're going to select is very low we know this uh, game has a lot of post-processing effects and um, niceties that are pretty tough on a, in a smaller uh, GPU so we'll pick number eight and we'll go for a custom resolution uh, number two we'll select the aspect ratio of four to three and we'll go with 800 by 600 because that's a pretty decent standard you wouldn't really want to go too low you'd lose a lot of uh, detail I would imagine So we will do some actual game testing of these games um, outside of this little mini review, but I just want to do the benchmarks so you get an idea of some actual game benchmarks um, rather than doing the uh, the synthetic stuff like 3D Mark and all that other jazz. I mean, there's no point. You're not going to be playing a game with that engine. So, um, yeah.
All right. So take a look at this. Um, looks like the first part we've got a, a average of 19.4 frames a second. The low comes as 8.77, and the maximum was almost 43 frames a second. Um, the town center, again, around the 19 mark. Um, again, a little under the 10 for the minimum. And the maximum was uh, just under 40. Um, the raffle, which we had a lot more people in that one. Um, you know, I don't even read the numbers for you. 17, 11, and 30. And Monument Island, the last part of it, uh, 22 frames a second. Regular uh, average, 13.7 low, and the high was 34.7. So overall, that left us with about 19.33 frames a second. Um, and... That's it, really. I guess that's our, our uh, interested uh, value we're looking at there. So anyways, uh, with that, that concludes the benchmarking portion. Well, that concludes the review for the Asus X205TA. And I, uh, sorry about the length on that thing. I went a little bit more comprehensive than I usually do. But uh, hopefully it was... Uh, informative at some point. Uh, if you feel like asking any questions about it, go right ahead. I'll be doing some gameplay videos um, in the coming days. So keep an eye out for those if you're interested in this product. And by all means, uh, leave a, uh, a note if there's uh, something you are personally interested in. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like or subscribe or just leave some kind of crazy comment below. And... We'll be talking to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye now.